Zoe Quinn's name is brought up pretty often by the media that's desperate to paint the gaming industry as a toxic cesspool. The media loves to grasp at things like Gamergate to write hit pieces about industries they claim to care about, and after Gamergate, she moved to the comic industry, and even though she was given tons of opportunities to succeed, her works have been massive failures. Uh, quickly though, before we get into the topic at hand, if you enjoy the content that I create, please make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell. Follow me on social media like Twitter or mine so that you can see when my content is posted. And of course, if you do really enjoy the videos and the live streams that I create, please consider becoming a Dark Titan via Patreon for just a dollar a month or supporting via YouTube memberships. All of the links are in the description and of course, I do really appreciate all of the support. So I wanted to start off with this Bounding Into Comics article. It says John Della Rose exposes Zoe Quinn's dismal sales for her DC comic series Goddess Mode and her autobiography. I can't help but laugh at this. She has been given so many opportunities and her work is so bad, none of it is selling. It says self-published author John Della Rose, who considers himself the leading Hispanic voice in science fiction, revealed the sales numbers of trad pub writer Zoe Quinn and they're not good at all. Gee, I wonder why. It can't be because no one wants to buy her work because she's insulted industries filled of people, right guys? Quinn, known for her role in Gamergate and running a crowdfund campaign that never produced a product, attempted to transition to a writer and take on fiction with novels and comic books, but it hasn't worked out for her despite having DC Comics and big time publishers behind her. This is a massive reason why people do not like and trust Zoe Quinn. She tried to start this massive crowdfund campaign for a product and it never ended up releasing. This is an article from Sophia Narwitz and I wanted to read the section about the kickstarting failure. It says it shouldn't be lost on anyone that Crash Override Network's acronym is CON and in many people's eyes Quinn is quite the con artist. Consider her failed Kickstarter project. Kickstarted in the butt, a Chuck Tingle digital adventure was a crowdfund funding campaign launched on October 26, 2016, and as per its pitch, she was seeking $69,000 for an erotic video game based on the works of Chuck Tingle. At the time of its introduction to the world, it was claimed the game was already a year into the development and that it hit a February 2017 release window. It has been years since this was announced, since she started collecting money from people. She made $85,000 thousand dollars off of it and the product never came out this is a massive reason to not support someone like zoe quinn never mind the gamergate situation she pushed gamergate as this big toxic situation she completely misconstrued what gamergate really was she says it was a big harassment campaign even though it was about video games journalism but of course for years now we've expected this game to release and it hasn't at all. She's never given really any information about it. She basically took the money and ran. But going back to the initial article, it says comparing the sales of his own fictional novel for Steam and Country, a steampunk fantasy, which are far and away better than Quinn's at Moving Units, he revealed Quinn has barely sold 4,000 copies combined of her autobiography, Crash Override, How Gamergate Destroyed My Life, in the trade paperback of her 2019 comic series, Goddess Mode. I know I personally would never, ever support anything Zoe Quinn was behind. There are people who would jump at the opportunity to have companies like Marvel and DC back them. There's people out there who would work themselves to the bone for their support and it's like she's putting out the worst work possible to not be successful with all of the chances that she's been given or maybe she just isn't talented enough and they shouldn't have hired her in the first place when she can't even write a decent story but she was given many many opportunities and her work, her comics, her books are selling like shit. It says, according to Nielsen Bookscan numbers Della Rose found on the forum site Kiwi Farms, and that he said he independently verified after they were posted by a publishing insider going by Boston Brand, 
Quinn only sold 3,441 copies of her autobiography, while the trade paperback version of Goddess Mode moved only a measly 715. This is what happens when you attack entire industries filled of people. You tell people, if you don't like me or you don't like my work, don't buy it because no one shows up to buy it. I would never, ever support projects that she's behind. I know a lot of other people wouldn't as well. I mean, selling 3,400 copies of an autobiography is pretty terrible. It's pathetic, let's be honest. And not even mentioning Zoe Quinn's name for a minute, the description of Goddess Mode sounds like trash. It says, In the near future, all of humanity's needs are administered by a godlike AI called Azop, and it's Cassandra Price's humiliating job to do tech support on it. The advent of Azoth has deepened inequality and robbed humanity of its soul, but Cassandra's life changes when she finds herself dragged violently into Azoth itself, manifested as a secret digital world beneath ours, one built on a combination of magic and metadata. There she encounters a group of apparently magical girls locked in a war with mysterious monsters for the power to fix the world. It sounds like woke trash, let's be honest. The women are super powered, they're locked in a war, they've got a fight for equality. It sounds terrible, no wonder it didn't sell. It says Goddess Mode was illustrated by Robbie Rodriguez, who is known for the lewd photos of his anatomy he shared on Twitter and sent to EVS. Uh, Della Rose claims to have sold around 10 times those numbers with uh, for Steam and Country, and having only the help of his supporters plus direct sales through Amazon. He has been blacklisted by mainstream publishing and the Literary Hugo Awards for not being woke. Unfortunately, we are talking about industries where you need to be woke to make it or to get support from large companies. He would also report on novelist Patrick S. Uh, Tomlinson's numbers. Uh, Tomlinson targeted Delarose back in 2018, which resulted in him suing Worldcon 76 after they described him as a racist and banned him from the convention. This is someone who's been through the ringer with companies and individuals attacking him because his political opinions are not in line with the mainstream. It says that lawsuit would eventually be settled with Worldcon issuing an apology and paying him $4,000. However, the Worldcon 76 Six chair would also admit to spending over a hundred thousand dollars in legal fees after banning him from the convention. I think that it's hilarious. We are having the time of our lives watching these people implode with Worldcon this year and with the sales numbers being leaked. And I also wanted to bring up this other Bounding Into Comics article from 2020. It says, Gamergate film announcement sparks outrage among movement's opponents, including Zoe Quinn and Brianna Wu. And hilariously, these people were furious over a Gamergate movie because they sold the rights to their Gamergate experience, thinking they'd make tons of money off of a giant film and their films were all cancelled, so they are furious. Now that other movies are being made about Gamergate, I honestly don't even know if these movies are going to be successful or even be finished, because there's been a couple of Gamergate products that have been in production that have silently been cancelled. But it says the announcement of a new film based on the events of Gamergate has sparked a massive wave of anger and outrage amongst internet personalities who opposed the internet controversy. I think that it's truly hilarious. People like Zoe Quinn sold their movie rights to Gamergate thinking that they were going to become millionaires overnight. They were going to get tons of social media attention. And now all of those projects are cancelled. And of course, I'm sure you all remember the terrible situation... Uh, involving Zoe Quinn from 2019. This article, though, says Night in the Woods dev Alec Holoka dies days after abuse allegations. Night in the Woods developer passed away days after he was accused of abuse by Zoe Quinn, as announced by his sister Aline on Twitter. This is an absolutely terrible and tragic situation that happened. I do remember talking about this, but basically Zoe Quinn accused him of uh, abuse during a relationship of theirs, and then slowly but surely we found out information that she actually seemed to be the abuser in the relationship according 
to uh, information that's been put online. An absolutely terrible situation, and this damaged her reputation severely. After all of these situations with Zoe Quinn, I really don't think that she's going to go anywhere. Every few months, she'll bring up Gamergate on social media for attention, just like Brianna Wu does, just like Anita Sarkeesian does. But besides the audience they already have, I don't think they're going to get very far. And hilariously, Zoe Quinn's sales have been absolutely terrible for her DC Comics series. But that's all that I really had to talk about in this video. Let everyone know your thoughts in the comment section down below. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to give it a like, share it, and subscribe to the channel. And of course, if you didn't, make sure to give it a dislike. I appreciate your support either way, but I will talk to you all again in the next video really soon.